Today we're going to talk about efficient building on Dartmouth's campus and some of the things that we do as we build new buildings to make those buildings more and more efficient. So the class of 1978 Life Sciences Center was built about 10 years ago, and even though this building is significantly bigger than the building it replaced, it uses about a third of the energy. One of the things that's hard about building new buildings on campuses is particularly replacing lab buildings or building efficient lab buildings. Lab buildings tend to use significantly more energy than your average office building, for example. So we replaced an old lab building that was very inefficient with a new lab building that is much more efficient. At the time, this building was uh, cutting edge in terms of its energy efficiency per square foot, which comes in at, at about 100 MMBTUs per square foot. There are a couple of things that made this building much more efficient. One of the things is the, the construction team focused on this, the building envelope, literally the walls and the skin of the building to make it more efficient. Typically at the time when building uh, green buildings, there was a lot of emphasis on renewable energy and uh, you know, high performance uh, lighting and, and things that sort of seemed sexy. The building team on this building was really focused on the energy performance of the building structure, particularly um, its walls, how its walls performed, the building envelope. For example, how they framed the windows was different than a building is typically framed. They focused as they were putting in the windows on creating the absolute best seal for those windows in the building structure. They also thought a lot about heat transfer from inside the building to outside the building. So where you typically might bring a beam all the way to the building skin, thereby creating heat transfer from the outside to the inside, they didn't do that. They buffered those beams and insulated them from the outside to the inside to avoid heat transfer. Those kinds of things paid dividends in terms of how the building performs, both in terms of occupancy comfort and also the amount of energy that's needed to heat and cool this building. When we typically think about buildings, we think about them as kind of inanimate, but they're, they're functionally animate, right? So this building is bringing in outdoor air from out here into the building for occupants to breathe and in order to exchange exhaust within laboratories. We used to do that in many of Dartmouth's older buildings. We would bring in outside air, we would heat it to the comfortable indoor temperature of 70 degrees, humidify or dehumidify it so that it was comfortable. And then when we were done using that air in the building, we would exhaust it out the roof of the building without capturing any of the heat we'd added to the air. In the winter, that's incredibly inefficient. You can imagine that you're, sending a, you're, you're taking a lot of energy to heat up outdoor air, to condition it, bring it into the building, and then you're just dumping all that heat out the roof of the building. This building uses an enthalpy wheel to capture the heat that's in that air and bring it back into the building. So the outgoing exhaust air leaves its heat behind and that heat that's captured from that air is used to preheat incoming air so that you don't have that massive loss of energy when the building is exhausting air. When this building was built, um, the sustainability focus was not just on energy. It was also on things like capturing water that's hitting the roof of the building and would normally run off as storm water. There's a couple reasons we want to capture water. One is to reuse that water in productive ways, so we're not pulling up groundwater to flush toilets, for example. The other reason is because when we have surfaces, pervious surfaces like a building, we're replacing what was here, which presumably was grass and trees, with impervious surface like a building, we're creating a stormwater problem because all that runoff off the top of the roof is sent into storm drains and it can create these big surges of, of runoff. So in order to avoid that and to make efficient use of the water coming off the roof, we capture the rainwater on the roof of this building, we hold it in giant cisterns, and we bring that water back into the building to flush toilets and to use in ways that, that are safe to use untreated rainwater uh, and really uh, maximize the efficient use of the, the pervious surface we've added to the landscape by building this building. 
In addition to sustainable features like energy efficiency, rainwater capture, covered bike racks, um, a loading dock that was designed to handle recycling, all of those kinds of features, we also thought a lot about what makes a building nice, pleasant to be in. Traditionally, lab buildings weren't really built with the occupant's comfort in mind. I can think back to my college days of spending times in windowless labs, right? This building, we didn't want it to be like that. So all of the, the labs in this building have access to natural light, which is a really important factor in human well-being. We thrive when we're exposed to natural light. So this building brings daylight into, into its spaces in order to create well-being. When improving efficiency, that also improves occupancy comfort. So, for example, making this building more efficient in terms of its temperature made it more comfortable for the occupants. So if you're in a building that the walls are cold, that is uncomfortable for the person whose office is against a wall. Occupancy comfort and what it felt like to be in this building were other features that were thought of as we thought about sustainability. One of the things that's interesting is this building was very innovative for its time, now 10 years ago. As we think about buildings now, there's even more we can do to improve efficiency. Learning from this building and some of its fundamental features, like a really excellent building envelope, um, we can build off of that to build even more efficient buildings as we go forward and to really push the envelope on what we ask of ourselves when we add buildings to Dartmouth's portfolio. Push the envelope.